And joining me now on the recent ruling on the Fairness Doctrine, it, doctrine is Seton Motley of LessGovernment.org to give us the full background on how we got to this point in the government's manipulation of information and in the media and on the Internet. Seton, thanks for being with Good us Good to tonight. see you, man. All right, so the Fairness Doctrine. Give us, give us the background. What is the Fairness Doctrine? Why is it, why is it relevant? What does it mean that it's... Uh, gone now. It's gone. Well, the fact, that the, the fact that it's gone now means that it is no longer relevant. The, the left doesn't give any w way to censor you away unless it's no longer okay, relevant. Okay, but, 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 but explain at least the, the yeah. crux of it. How long was it in effect? What was the effect that it had well, on the media? It was created in 1954. It was... Uh, to create balance on the radio airwaves. If you had a, a liberal... How has that gone yeah, so far? Well, wait, wait, wait. Is anybody listening to anything other than Rush Limbaugh? Well, well no, but, he, but here's the thing. That, he, Rush Limbaugh arose after it was no longer enforced. Here, let me give you the history real quick. 54, they enforced it. Because it was such a nightmare and such a mess, no one did anything controversial on the radio when you had gardening shows mm. on 24 hours a day. Reagan's FCC... The, Maybe that was the goal. That, that was, well, I, uh, that was one of the goals. <laughs> uh, in, in 1987, the Federal Communications Commission under Reagan, supposed to have five commissioners or sometimes one not appointed, you voted 4-0 unanimously to stop enforcing it. It was still on the books. They would just no longer enforce it. The Democrats immediately went nuts. They controlled the House, the Senate. They passed a bill saying the Fairness Doctrine should be back in. Reagan vetoed it. A couple years later, when Bush was in, they were threatening to pass another bill. Bush threatened to veto it, and they never got to the legislation. So then it kind of went underground. Uh, but it was on the books all this time. Well, hold on, just, just a second here. Isn't this, yeah. isn't this a little more of like a, just a, a simple power struggle? I mean, if the law is on the books and a regulatory agency says we're not going to enforce no, it No, it wasn't right a now. law. It was just a regulation oh, at so the it was FCC. A regulation. It was never a law. Okay. It was just a regulation at the FCC. That's why Congress tried to pass a law. So that they could be the ones determining well, the power the, well, structure yes. as opposed to giving the administration Because they wanted the Fairness control. Doctrine back. Because when, when the Fairness Doctrine went away in 87, there were 100 talk radio stations. Now there are more than 2,000. Think the Fairness Doctrine silenced free speech? I would argue that it did. So when they, so, and of course, we didn't get to 90% conservative talk radio overnight. It's because every day, every American wakes Market up and forces. goes, we want to choose A and not B. Right. But, you know, Aaron, well, also, particularly in radio as a format, because of the rural nature of the way it's listened to, mostly well, and, by vehicle. And just or, look at the marketplace. Uh, if ABC, NBC, CBS, New York Times, Washington Post are all liberal. Do we need liberal radio, too? I mean, really? Air America has filed for bankruptcy so many times, it should file for nonprofit <laughs> status. So, so um, you know, Al Franken's more successful as an elected official than he was as an Air America talk show host. So, so what happened was, in the 20-plus years since then, we've had the birth of the Internet. Now, we don't need... Fairness Doctrine only applies exclusively to over-the-air broadcast radio. Well... A, Americans understand. So wait, 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 wait. It, 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 the government at some point decided we have to make the radio fair, but print media right. and television. Right, and th this, is the, this is the stupid thing. It was because they said, you know, some, oh, I think Greg Walden, congressman from Oregon who used to own radio stations, had a great line. He said, if Marconi had invented the radio prior to the writing of the First Amendment, there would have been no question that the Fairness Doctrine was unconstitutional because it's freedom of the press. Radio is a, pr a press agent just as much as a print media is, as a television media is. So anyway, so with that in mind, they try to claim because of th the government is allocating you the broadcast spectrum, they have a say in what you can do on the airwaves. Nice it, excuse. Yes. So anyway, so what's happened is the Internet's come up, and more and more in news information... It's, it's, it's more important to regulate the Internet than any of these which other mediums at this point, right? Exactly. So th they've imposed net neutrality, which covers every, more and more content. But, 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 but net neutrality, you're, you're making a parallel between net neutrality and the fairness doctrine, but the fairness sort of. doctrine... Okay. Sort of. Because there's a big difference. Right. What I'm saying is more and more content, whether it's video, audio, or print, is being created for or exclusively for the Internet which means the, it's going to bypass the fairness doctrine. For example, remember, it only applies to over-the-air radio. Okay, so new medium, new strategy of right. oppression. Right, right. Got it. Got it. Ten years from now, when you get in your car, it's not going to be an over-the-air broadcast radio on your dashboard. It's going to be an internet, internet radio. radio. Bingo. So net neutrality is the 21st century one-stop shop for censorship. Nice. If you don't like the video someone's producing, 
for the web, net neutrality. If you don't like the radio show someone's producing okay, for the hold, web, hold, net hold neutrality. Hold on, hold on, hold on, because net neutrality really doesn't go that far into, into moderating content, does it? Isn't net neutrality of more course about service providing? No, no, no. Of course it does. Because what it's telling the people who built the internet with their private money, so this is a fifth, I mean, you said there were other constitutional issues, this is the takings clause, Fifth mm -hmm. Amendment too, yeah, because it's their property. They're trying to say, you can't regulate, you can't operate your property, your internet bandwidth, your, your broadband pipes the way you need to, to properly make it function. For example, Netflix is getting off scot-free to the tune of billions of dollars at our expense. They're charging you eight bucks a month for unlimited downloads, right? Mm -hmm. On, but because of net neutrality, the, the broadband providers who are delivering that content to you cannot charge Netflix more money for using all that bandwidth. So the grandma who's emailing her grandkids and that's it has to pay more for her internet because Comcast is prevented by net neutrality to charge the Netflix okay, more. But, but see, and this is where you get into content because okay. the, the godfather of the media reform movement, which are the, I call them media Marxists, uh, so they're Marxists for the media realm, that's it. His name is Robert McChesney. He's a college professor. He's also a, Marxist, a vowed Marxist. Please pardon the redundancy. <laughs> Robert McChesney has written Net neutrality is the necessary first step in eradicating the media capitalists from the phone and cable companies and divesting them from control. Funny how, how if you, if how you, if you look hard enough, you him. find the real reason. Right. He it, writes it all. Really he's, he's a bizarre man. When you go and see him speak in person, he never says anything at all controversial or harsh. He writes it down and he's nuts. So he wrote this. He said the ultimate objective of net neutrality is to eradicate the media capitalists and take their property from them. These are the same people that want to dramatically increase the funding of government media, public television, public radio. These people want the government to be the sole provider of news and information. Of course. And that's, course. A, that's a great end, <laughs> end game. That's a great outcome. But, but let me ask you a question here. Seen, you're, you're conservative. Yes. Um, I thought in order to fight for internet freedom you had to be cool, young, and liberal. Well, the problem is the cool, young, and liberal people have... Not that you're not cool. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm not. And I'm, <laughs> I'm barely young anymore. But, but, oh. um, but, but um, the, the problem is their definition of freedom is either misguided or intentionally misleading. When they say internet freedom, they mean freedom from the free market. Freedom from private ownership so that the government can own it. And there's, as you know, in the, in the leftist movement, there's always two tiers. There's the upper tier that knows it doesn't work, but wants to implement it anyway so they can be in control. And then there's the, what uh, Nikita Khrushchev called the useful idiots. Right, it's the, 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 the rank mis, and, right. misleading, the sheep and the, and the, the shepherds. Misguided. Right, right. It's the, yes, it's the misleading, it's the sheep leading the shepherds. And the useful idiots think they're fighting for internet freedom, when really they're, they're useful dupes to the Soviet leadership, to the, to the Marxist leadership. And because the way they've done this is they've, they've, they've hooked it to, to, to my generation, the, this idea of net neutrality by, and you'll have to pay, you won't have to pay as much for right. downloading all that video. And, and, and I, I, I'm, I'm a retired musician. I was one of the few musicians I knew who wasn't ripping off via Napster. So I'm like, I'm st you're stealing from the one person that can walk into the restaurant you're waiting tables at and say, you don't have to wait tables anymore, sign here. You're stealing from those people. Likewise, net... Oh, don't, don't, don't get me started on intellectual property, man. <laughs> well, we, I'm, I think we're on the same page on that, right. too. But, but, but the, the fact of the matter is, these companies have spent hundreds of billions of dollars building this network. This is not a public utility, which is what they tried to do. Well, if we, if we didn't have a system of corporatism, hopefully we, we could get to a, a point where we have a greater respect for private property rights in the hands of corporations when it's about something as essential as freedom of information. And exactly. I'm sorry, seeing that's Good all the time we have, but thank you so much for Always a pleasure, man. Thank you. All right, seeing Motley of less government, lessgovernment.org.